the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. So every time we come to, if we live back then, every time we come, we have to bring a lamb, and we have to kill that lamb, and its blood would cover our sins. But if we left, and we got in a fight, or we disobeyed our parents or something, what is that? That's sin. And if we wanted to come back to God, what would we need? Another sacrifice to cover those sins. But Jesus, when he shed his blood on the cross and died, everybody who receives him, everybody who believes on him, does Jesus have to die over and over and over and over again? No, because Jesus' blood not only covers our sin, the Bible says his blood takes away our sins. Yeah. And then there was this. Does anybody remember what this was? Remember, we come in through the door. We have this bronze altar where we sacrifice the lamb. And then we can, then, now none of us could go past this, but the priests would go from here into here and back and forth, and they would pass this thing up right here. And every time they passed this, they needed to stop and do what? What was, what was here? Okay, I'm getting, let's see here. Were you even here on it? So how would you know? Uh, Chloe. It's like a bird bath and you have to kill the bee. It was kind of like a bird bath. It was way, way more special than a bird bath. But for our mind, it was a big basin that had water in it. And, and like you said. That had water in it. Yep, well, she already said it. And what would you do in it? You would wash your hands and your feet there. You didn't have to clean your whole self, but you had to wash your hands and your feet. And really, this reminds us of Jesus, too. It, what was it made of? No, no, it wasn't the bird water problem. I was afraid of that. It's like that, but what was it made of? What was what what was it built out of? Gold. Bronze. Bronze. What kind of bronze? Metal. Metal. What kind of bronze metal? What 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 did they do with it before they turned it into this? They melted it. What did they melt? Metal. What did they do with the metal before they melted it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I must not have said what it was. I think I did. But the ladies, they always wanted to know if they looked nice or not, right? So they had a really shiny bronze metal looking glass that they could look in there and they could see their reflection in it. And they took those super shiny brass metal and they made this out of that. So that if you came to look in it, you could see if you were dirty, right? And you could use some of that water to clean yourself. And when we look at Jesus, we can see how we're supposed to act, and we can see if we're acting the way Jesus did. So it's like looking in a mirror. We look at Jesus, we look at, and how do we see what Jesus did? Where can we see what Jesus did? Where? Class? In the Bible. That's right. So when we look in the Bible, we can see what we should look, we can see what we should do, and if we haven't been doing it, then we know that that's a spot that needs cleaned up. Right? So, this is called the tabernacle. This is the tent itself. And today, we're going to talk about the things that covered the actual tent, let's say. There was, you might not remember this. Which one do I want now? There was... When Moses came down, Moses said, "We God wants you to build something, and he wants lots of stuff. Remember, he said, I want this, and this, and this, and this. And all the people started bringing all their stuff. They brought all their stuff, and there was more than enough stuff. Well, some of the things that he said he needed was he needed blue cloth and red cloth. You remember me saying that? And purple cloth and white cloth and gold and um, ram's hair uh, or goat's hair and badger skins, and um, uh, uh, ram skins, all these things, and they use, and, and, they, and wood, all kinds of, they use this for a lot of the different things. In the tabernacle, they use the wood and the brass to make the altar. They use just brass to make the labor, the place where they clean themselves. They use the white linen to build this fence around it. And they used wood for the post to hang the fence on, and silver to, to um, silver and bronze to attach the post to the ground so that it stood nice and straight. And for the gate, you remember, there was lots of colors 
in that curtain across the gate. So there was all those things. And today, whoops. Today, we're going to talk about the covers of the tabernacle. Okay? And what do you think? Tricky question. Let's see what kind of memory you have, Abby. What do you think the covers of the tabernacle will remind us of? Or should I make it much easier to answer? Don't make it easier to answer? What do you think, Silas? Of Jesus. What? Of Jesus. We'll just say of Jesus. Okay, we'll stop there. Yes. Because everything in the tabernacle reminds us of Jesus. Now, it remind them of Jesus. They didn't know about Jesus. They knew God, but God was using the tabernacle to show us truth. And things that was going to be very clear once Jesus came. So, in the tabernacle, I'm going to mention this um, this gate, uh, curtain here. So there's three curtains like this. There's the one out front, and then there's this one here, and it hangs from these gold pillars. And it's beautiful. And... If you, now, there's, there's stuff in here that we'll talk about later, but once you got through that, there's another very beautiful curtain here. Now, these colors are just a couple colors, but so we can't really tell. But in these, in this veil, which is a, like a wall, a big, thick curtain, there's angels uh, embroidered into that. But the covering, the cover of the tabernacle, there were four layers in the cover of the tabernacle. And I want us to try to learn them and remember them at least until next week. Okay? The first one, if we were just standing out here like we are walking up and we look at the tabernacle, the very outside covering that we would see, the one that everybody sees, was badger skins. Badger skins. Now, badger is a small animal and there must have been a lot of them there. So they would, they got all kinds of badger skins because they had to sew those badger skins together. They had to turn them into uh, like leather and sew them together and make a huge covering over the outside of the tabernacle. Now the badger skins, they don't really look that nice. If you, It's nothing, not nearly as nice as this curtain. The badger skin is kind of rough and furry and but it is strong, and it protects things. A badger skin, a skin is a very good covering because it doesn't let water in. Can you imagine all the valuable stuff that was inside here? We wouldn't, if it rained, we wouldn't want it to ruin the stuff inside, right? Why do we put a roof on our house? Because we don't want to ruin the stuff that's inside. And so the badger skin, it was not pretty, not beautiful to look at it, but it was strong, and it was protection. And you know what? The Bible tells us that Jesus is like that too. Jesus is strong, and Jesus loves and protects those that are his inside. And the Bible even tells us that Jesus was not um, anything special to look at. Now, we can't see Jesus. We don't know what Jesus looked like. We don't even try to figure out what he looked like. But the Bible tells us that he, he was nothing special to look at. He wasn't, um, he wouldn't, they didn't have him back then, but he wouldn't have been on the cover of a magazine like, look at Mr. Handsome. That wouldn't have been Jesus. He looked just like any other man. It was nothing special to look at. But was he something special? Yes. Yeah. But if you didn't know Jesus, if you hadn't believed on Jesus, you would look at him and think, oh, there's any other man. He wasn't just any other man. But many people look at him and they think, ah, there's just another man, another man in history. So, the badger skin reminds us of Jesus and that he was a man. He came and he became a man. Even though he was God, he became a man. But as a man, he is strong and he protects those that are inside or that are in him. Then, the second layer, there's, remember there's four layers? The second layer, and I don't have this. So the second layer was ram skins. Ram skins 
dyed red. Now, do you know what it is when you dye something? You kids do that sometimes, right? You put Kool-Aid in your hair or you, you make your hair a different color. What are you doing? You're dyeing your hair. You're making it a certain color. So some of you have done that. Um, so they took ram skins in the same way. They got the skin of the ram. Now, rams were used as sacrifices. Rams, beside lambs, rams were used all the time in sacrifices. And what was the sacrifice for? What did they use the sacrifice for most of the time? Remember, if I come to the tabernacle, I have to have a sacrifice because I'm a sinner and I need to have my sins covered. And when we, now we don't do this anymore, but when they would kill that sacrifice, when they would offer that sacrifice, they would kill it. And what comes out of a sacrifice when you kill it? Blood. blood. What color is blood? Red. It's red. So the blood would it symbolize life. Because that's where, you know, if you don't have your blood, you don't have your life, right? So the blood there, the red blood, would come out and they would use it in a particular way in their, in their sacrifices. So the ram that was often used as a sacrifice, that his skin dyed red, which reminds us of the blood of his sacrifices, reminds us that Jesus was a sacrifice, doesn't it? Jesus was a sacrifice. Jesus came. History tells us he came. History tells us that he died on the cross. He was crucified. He was executed. And he shed his blood. And, and, and we know that. We know that Jesus lived on the earth and he died and shed his blood. And when we read the Bible, we understand that he did that as a sacrifice. He was a sacrifice for everybody in the whole world that would believe on him and turn to him for salvation. But, so, he is pictured in the ram skins dyed red as a sacrifice. The badger skin reminds us that Jesus became a man and that he's strong and protective. The ram skins dyed red reminds us that Jesus died as a sacrifice. He shed his own blood as a sacrifice. Then, there was a third layer, or a second layer, depending on if you're counting from the inside or the outside. Where's my picture? Oh, there we go. Okay. So, or, no, here we go. So there's this outside layer, and we can't see in this illustration the second layer, but can you see something hanging over here? Across the front there, it's going a different direction. This, this is goat's hair that was weaved, woven into a third covering. They took goat's hair and they took the hair and they wove it into a type of a cloth, a, something that would cover the whole thing. And they had a whole long set of goat's hair. Now, goats were used for a lot of different things, but there are two goats that are especially memorable when we think about what the people of Israel did in their sacrifices. There was one special day in their uh, year where they would all fast, they would all stop eating for the day, and the high priest would take two goats and he would do something with them. On one, he would confess the sins of everybody over that goat and he would kill that goat and offer it as a sacrifice. And then, on the other one, he would place his hands on that and confess the sins of all the people of Israel over that. And then they would lead that goat out into the wilderness. And those two goats pictured something for us. What do you think they pictured? Ah. Tricky question. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus did both. Jesus gave his life, his blood, as a sacrifice to cover. And actually, what? Did Jesus' blood only cover our sins? No, it takes away our sins, but that's where the other goat comes in. The other goat, what did it do? It took those sins away out in the wilderness where they could be forgotten. And Jesus pictures both of those. He both gave his life for our sins, and he made it so that those sins are taken away, and God doesn't need to, doesn't see them. He puts them as far away from him as possible. And so, when we think of the goats here, we think of these two, we could think of these two goats, and remember who? Jesus, who did, when he sacrificed himself, 
He did all of that. Finally, there's the inside. Now, the fourth layer down is actually the, the inside layer that if you were inside, you'd look up and you would see this layer. Now, could any of us go inside the tabernacle and look at it? No, who's the only ones that could go inside the tabernacle and look at it? Well, God's presence was there, but only priests could go in there. We could come, and we would go, and we would bring our sacrifice, and then the priest would take stuff from our sacrifice, and only he could go inside there. So, but when he went in there, he would see walls that were made of wood and covered with gold. Gold on all the walls, set in sockets, set in silver um, things that would hold it in place down by the ground. And over the top, a beautiful blue and red and purple and white embroidered with uh, cherubims, with angels, all in the top. And that, that is the beautiful inside. When, if a priest was inside, would he see the outside? No, and since and we're outside and we're looking outside, do we see the inside? No, but there are all four layers there. And what do you think that fourth layer reminds us of? It reminds us of Jesus and how wonderful it is to actually know him and live for him. So I want us to think about these four levels, these four layers. The first one, many people, they only know Jesus as a man who lived a long time ago. They don't, they don't recognize that he gave his life as a sacrifice. They just know that he was a man who lived a long time ago. But Jesus is more than that. Jesus came when he lived a long time ago. He gave his own life. He was a sacrifice himself. He shed his blood. And some people know that Jesus shed his blood for them, but they don't believe on him. They just know about that Jesus shed his blood for them. They, don't, they, don't, they haven't believed on him, they haven't turned from their sin and believed on him, and he hasn't covered their sins or taken their sins away. But some of us have. Some of us know Jesus was a man, we know Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for us, and we've turned from our sin and believed on him, and he's taken our sins away. He's covered our sins, forgiven them, and taken them away, and then... But, but, but let me just say, there's more to Jesus than have just having him take our sins away. We can know him even better. We can have a wonderful relationship with him, one that is beautiful. And that happens by learning more and more about him. How do we learn more and more about Jesus? By reading our Bible. By praying. By telling other people about Jesus. By going, coming to Bible club. By going to church on Sunday. Lots, all lots of those things. Those are ways that we can know Jesus in an even greater way, in a better way, than just knowing that he saved us. And those, all four of those ways can be pictured to us in the coverings of the tabernacle. The outside reminds us, Jesus, God became a man and lived on the earth. The second layer, the red layer, reminds us that he sacrificed himself and shed his blood for everybody in the whole world. The goat hair reminds us that that sacrifice, Jesus, if we believe on him, he takes our sins, he forgives our sins and takes them away. And the beautiful blue and red and purple and white and angels, the heavenly layer, reminds us that Jesus wants more for us than just forgiving our sins. He wants us to have a wonderful life that comes by learning more about him in the Bible and doing the things that he wants us to do. And next week, remember I said that there's stuff in here? Next week we're going to learn about the things that are inside this room of the tabernacle and how what do you think the things in this room of, of the tabernacle will picture for us? God. What's his name? Jesus. 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 All right.